Well, shooters and reloaders, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to the Hot Lead Zone Express. And also the Three Circles passengers and members, hello to all of you out there. This video is a VR to Cesar Reynoso and Maria Zvijakova because they're really interested in shooting shotgun slugs but they have a lot of questions concerning the safety issues of shooting them through different chokes and different hardness alloys since we're into casting our slugs also. Let's look at some of these slugs here. Now there's lots of interest in shotgun slugs for many reasons. The world is full of all kinds of 12 gauge shotgun slugs. But thanks to Jeff at Tauflederenmoss, here are just some of the examples of slugs that you might run across. All kinds of slugs. Jeff over there has shot every kind of slug you can imagine. And shot them safely. Well let's look at the safety issues of shooting 12 gauge slugs. What you see here are just three of the factory slugs loaded by American companies. And here is a slug loaded by a European company. And here are two of our slug reloads that we can do here in the United States. The bearing surface on all of these slugs is on the low side. Low bearing surface. See those driving bands there? See those driving bands there? All the bearing surfaces are, are on the low side. And if the bearing surface is great, a softer sabot type material is used to help keep the pressures down. And the reason for that is our 12 gauge shotguns are limited to 11,500 PSI the SAMI specifications for 12 gauge. And as you know, rifles can use up to 65,000 PSI and handguns can go up to 65,000 PSI. But the 12 gauge shotgun, 11,500 only. That's a low pressure compared to what rifles and handguns use. Now the reason why Maria Zvijakova and Cesar Reynoso might be confused about the issues of safety is because if you do an internet search, you'll hear all kinds of things about the safety of shooting rifled slugs in 12 gauge shotguns. Everything from you can shoot any rifled slug through any choke to only use cylinder bore or at most improved cylinder, nothing tighter. And you'll hear that pure lead is the only material that should be used for slugs. And others that will say you can use other alloys and it's okay. So no wonder there's confusion. So let's look at this. This happens to be a factory foster slug American style. And you see the low bearing surface provided by the rifled appearance here. Keeps the bearing surface down. If you go ahead and measure this slug, you'll find that this is actually sub caliber here. And it's only the little skirt on the back end that is bore riding. So once again, you got low bearing surface provided by the diameter and also by these rifling flutes. This slug works. And that's why American factory slugs are loaded with these slugs. Because you might ask, why haven't we developed all the slugs that Europeans and Russians have done? Well, this style works. And you can take deer with this and it's accurate out to 100 yards because of the way they make this slug mated with their proprietary wad systems and they shoot very well because this section rides the bore and this section is a tight fit to the bore. This little ring right here provides the accuracy that our factory slugs give us. 
we can't get those slugs or wads as a rule when it comes to making our reload. Now getting back to the safety issue, the American slug makers will tell you that they recommend using a cylinder or improved cylinder borer for these slugs because they are designed to work best in those bores, but that they will also emphasize that it's safe to shoot this through a choke up to full choke. And some even say it's safe in any choke. If you think about that, that's a little bit of a unwise statement, don't you think? To make a broad statement like that would leave yourself open to liability. Fact of the matter is, you don't want to shoot these through an extra full choke or a turkey choke. Chokes like that would be foolish to shoot this slug through that tight a choke. And just because you can safely shoot this through a full choke, it might not be the wisest thing to do. So these happen to be breaded chokes. The one on the end is a cylinder bore. So let's take our slug and put it into the muzzle end of the cylinder borer. And look at that. It drops in almost to the ring, which is a very tight fit in, in a cylinder bore. So do you think that's safe to shoot through a cylinder bore when you're using pure lead slug and just that much bearing surface? Now take that out. And let's just put it through an improved cylinder. Not even a real tight choke. Improved cylinder. I'll put it in and look at that. Now you've got that much surface that's bearing. Just to get to the tighter ring. Do you think that's safe to shoot? Remember we only have 11,500 PSI. Now let's take this one, which happens to be a factory full choke tube for a 12 gauge. And you put that in. And look at that. The bearing surface is all of that, even though you've got a rifled section. That doesn't even get to the tighter bore section. 11,500 PSI. Remember, we only got that much of a limit. And sure, that might be safe to shoot through with 11,500 PSI. But suppose you're shooting a more powerful load. Suppose your particular choke is a little tighter than that. Suppose they made the slug with a little bit of antimony added by mistake. Do you think you have a lot of safety margin? Probably enough. But is it the wisest thing to invite this kind of thing? Now let's go to the other end of these choke tubes. We'll turn these choke tubes around. And this is the barrel end. So here's your cylinder. And look at that. That slug drops all the way down inside there. Now your improved cylinder. So here comes your slug merrily going down the cylinder portion of the barrel and it hits the choke and the slug goes right to the mouth of the improved cylinder choke. Do you think that's pretty good? I would think so. Now here comes the slug going down and it merrily hits the full choke section. And you know what that is on the other side, how much that's got to go in there and constrict down. But there's the difference on the barrel end. Not the muzzle end, but the barrel end with the full choke. Let's see if I can drive this point home a little bit better. What you see here is a 690 round ball. This 690 round ball was designed to be put into a trap wad. This one is the cylinder board. Watch this. Just drops right in. Same round ball. Now through the improved cylinder. 
just drops right in. And now here's the full choke. Just drops right in, doesn't it? So, even if it's safe to shoot proof loads in our guns, if we're over 11,500 PSI, say we're at 12, 13, 14,000 PSI, that's a proof load and it might still be safe. And you might still be able to say, yeah, it's safe to shoot proof loads, okay. But if we're wise, why would we want to? Let's do that again. Oh, it's stuck in there. It was stuck, couldn't pull, pull it out. So Maria's Vigikova and Cesar Reynoso, I hope this has kind of illustrated what we're talking about. And sure, all of you shooters and reloaders out there responsible for your own safety, you can go along with what the factories are saying, that their slugs are safe to shoot through any choke. You gotta wonder about the wisdom of putting that in print. Bye for now.